Earlier this month, Yamaha announced that 2021 would be the final year of their R6 model. Declining Supersport sales and increasingly stringent emission standards seem to be the killers. As Yamaha sunsets their venerable 600, I thought I'd take this opportunity to reminisce and take a look back at the dawn of the R6, the Supersport that changed it all. So join me as I review my personal 2001 Yamaha R6 and give you an overview of the model. The R6 launched in 1999, a year after Yamaha shook up the leader bike market with the first R1. To understand what a truly revolutionary bike the R6 was when it first launched requires taking a look at its contemporaries. Yamaha themselves used the R6 to replace the aging YZF600, Suzuki had their Jixxer 600, Honda had just released the CBR600 F4, and Kawasaki had just updated their ZX6R. All of those bikes made between 90 and 100 horsepower, and then all of a sudden, in comes Yamaha with their massive air intake and a ram air system claiming 107 horsepower while stationary, or 120 horsepower while moving. Yamaha claimed that the R6 was the first motorcycle to break the 200 horsepower per liter of displacement mark, but I think the Japanese government capping 250cc bikes at 45 horsepower had more to do with that than any real limit of engineering capabilities. Even four-stroke bikes like the CBR 250RR and ZX25R were making 45 horsepower by the early 90s, so it's not a stretch to think that they could have squeezed an extra five ponies if they weren't limited by pesky government regulations. In addition to the significant power advantage, the first generation R6 was also 10 to 20 pounds lighter than its contemporary competition, leading many to credit the R6 as pushing forward the middleweight arms race that would see future bikes such as the CBR 600RR and subsequent generations of the R6 really pushed the 600 class in a more track-focused direction. Yamaha did see some racing success with the original model R6, winning the World Supersport Manufacturer's title in 99, 2000, and 2001. I'm of the opinion that the first generation R6 represents Yamaha's last attempt at building a street-focused sport bike before the track-first, street-second ethos really took hold. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, but first I'd like to take a minute to talk about the design of the R6. I love that the first generation R6 doesn't look dated. In fact, I think it's aged much more gracefully than a lot of other 90s sport bikes have. The front end features awesome dual headlights, angled slightly, striking a nice balance between aggressive and just straight up angry. Opinions will vary, but I think the 2001 R6 strikes the perfect balance between something like the cute FZRs of the late 80s and the overly aggressive headlights of later R6 models. Anyway, in between the lights we've got the aforementioned duck for the ram air system. A nicely shaped gas tank and some of my favorite tail lights ever are some of the other highlights of the original R6. The rear passenger seat is also surprisingly large and usable for two up riding, and the underseat storage is also fantastic when compared with more modern sport bikes. As you can see, I've got room for my insurance papers, a small tool kit, and a disc brake lock. The frame, known as the Delta Box 2, is a further evolution of Delta Box frames that Yamaha developed in World GP racing back in the early 1980s. First seen on road bikes with Yamaha's FZR series, the upgraded Delta Box 2 uses the engine as a stress member of the frame, meaning no cradle is necessary. You can see the difference between the first and second generation Delta Box frames in this picture. Using the engine as a stress member of the frame allowed Yamaha to do a couple of things. First of all, the swing arm can be mounted significantly further forward than on previous sport bikes. This means that the swing arm itself can be lengthened without increasing the overall wheelbase. And it really is a best of both worlds situation. The longer swing arm creates a feeling of plantedness on acceleration, while the shortest wheelbase of any contemporary supersport motorcycle results in light and nimble handling. The engine is a 600cc dual overhead cam inline 4 engine. I've seen some people online lamenting that, much like the first generation R1, 
The original run of the R6 was saddled with a carbureted engine. Personally, I haven't found it too bad. Once the engine warms up, it runs just fine, and while you'll still get a little bit of that bogging down feeling if you try to give it too much gas too quickly, uh, it's definitely much better than other carbureted bikes I've had, such as Honda's Hornet 600. That said, the bike is pretty calm around town as long as you make sure to keep it under that five or 6,000 RPM range. The even, linear power band makes for a bike that's docile in traffic, gives you plenty of feedback before the power comes on, and then hits you with that big dose of power. It makes for a bike that's predictable and very fun. The bike's fantastic handling is aided by fully adjustable suspension front and rear. For the front end, preload and rebound damping are up at the top of the forks, and compression damping is found down near the calipers. As for the rear, preload is adjusted on the spring itself, while rebound and compression damping have separate adjusters. I'm no suspension expert by any means, but I've found the bike to be comfortable on the street with the manufacturer's recommended specs, and I've found that going one or two clicks harder on the front gives better feeling through tight turns. On designing the R6, project leader Kunihiko Miwa said that his goal was to create a bike that was easy to ride fast, but that doesn't necessarily mean a bike built purely for speed. Speaking with Total Motorcycle in 1999, Miwa stated that the R6 was more about the feeling for this interactive response between the bike and the rider. It should be like a good conversation from man to machine, and vice versa. This gives excitement and satisfaction. So both R1 and R6 are targeted towards rider control on every type of twisty road, and not just to ride with high speed. Yamaha has operated on a similar philosophy for many decades, at least since the creation of the FZR400. Interviews regarding the development of that bike showed how engineers believed that a confident rider was a fast rider. Therefore, rather than design the bike purely for speed, faster lap times would come from a bike that gave the rider a sense of confidence, a philosophy that I think really shines through on the first generation R6. The riding position is sporty yet comfortable, with pegs at a reasonable height, leaving enough legroom even for me at 6 foot 5. The clip-ons are positioned above the triple clamp, making for a reach that isn't too far while still maintaining that sporty, leaned-forward feeling. The seat as well, while not something I'd want to sit on for a long road trip, offers more padding than any other Supersport I've ridden, and is perfectly comfortable for a Sunday's worth of riding. If I had one complaint, I actually wish the clip-ons were a little higher, just so I could get that little bit better grip around the tank with my knees. to use one word to describe the original R6, it would be feedback. On familiar roads, you can quickly and safely find the bike's sweet spot, with the front end in particular having great feel. On unfamiliar roads, the predictable nature of the handling means you never feel on edge. It's always easy to feel exactly what the bike is doing underneath you. It's a great all-around package, and I've really been enjoying riding it since I bought the bike about half a year ago. It's funny how time can change our perception of something. Reading old magazine reviews of the original R6, journalists praised it as the sportiest 600 they've ever ridden, and a bike built for the track. Riding it now and thinking back to those reviews, it almost feels a little quaint. It's not that the R6 isn't a fast bike, it absolutely is. It's just that, with the hindsight of what the 600cc class would become in the decade following the release of this bike, it's hard not to look back on the original R6 and see it more as a street bike than the track missile it was hailed as when it came out. It seems the waning of the dedicated race replica class has finally led to manufacturers taking another look at this style of bike. Honda's new CBR650R immediately comes to mind, as does Ducati's Supersport. So with the R6 lineage coming to an end in 2020, I'm left wondering if Yamaha will give this sort of street-focused sport bike another try. R6 design lead Kunihiko Miwa stated that the original design goal for the R6 was excitement. It's a benchmark that I still think the R6 passes with finesse, and as it is, the first generation R6 stands as the last of a generation of 90 sport bikes designed to be equally as enjoyable on the track as on the road. Thanks for watching my R6 review. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing or leaving a like. As an extra little bonus for those who watched until the end, I'll finish the video with a little pure engine sound from that beautiful aero exhaust. Again, thanks for watching, have a great day, and ride safe.
Mm-hmm.